measurement of blood pressure is used in screening for hypertension and for monitoring the effectiveness of treatment for patients with a diagnosis of hypertension. In the outpatient setting, blood pressure is measured indirectly. It is important to use proper techniques so that readings are consistent and reliable. Turning to JNC8, patients 60 and older who do not have diabetes or kidney disease need to have blood pressure under 150 over 90. For all other patients, the blood pressure goal is less than 140 over 90. The stethoscope used should have tubing long enough to allow the clinician to view the manometer while listening to Karotkov sounds. The bell of the stethoscope should be used as it permits better auscultation of Karotkov sounds. A sphygmo manometer consists of a blood pressure cuff containing a distensible bladder, a rubber bulb with an adjustable valve, and a flexible tubing. The tube connects to a manometer which measures the pressure within the cuff. Each part of the sphygmo manometer should be examined on a regular basis to be sure that it is functioning correctly. The needle on an aneroid manometer should rest at zero before and after each blood pressure measurement. Blood pressure readings should be done when the patient is in a resting state. The patient should be seated for five minutes prior to checking a blood pressure so that the reading is not artificially elevated due to the exertion of walking to the room. The patient must be correctly positioned to accurately measure blood pressure. The patient needs to have legs uncrossed and feet resting on a firm surface. The patient's back and legs should be supported by the chair. The manometer should be at eye level of the care team member. The patient's arm should be supported at heart level. A common error in taking blood pressure is the use of an improperly fitted cuff. The appropriate cuff size is determined by the circumference of the arm at the midpoint between the olecranon process and the acromion process. The cuff will have the size range listed in centimeters. Once the correct cuff is selected, proper fit is verified using the index line that runs perpendicular to the length of the cuff and a range line that runs parallel to the length of the cuff. When a cuff fits appropriately, the inflatable bladder should cover about 80% of the circumference of the patient's arm. Using a cuff that is too short and narrow results in erroneously high blood pressure measurement. When a cuff is too large, blood pressure measurements will be erroneously low. The cuff should be applied 2 cm above the crease of the elbow. It should fit snugly but still allow two finger widths under the cuff. When the cuff is in place on the upper arm, the index line should fall within the range line. Next, find the brachial artery, which is palpable about 4 cm from the medial epicondyle on the anterior surface of the elbow. Place the stethoscope lightly against the skin over the brachial artery, being sure that the pressure is appropriate for good sound transmission. Make sure that the blood pressure cuff and clothing do not touch the stethoscope. Inflating the cuff to an arbitrary level will often lead to overinflation, which can be uncomfortable for the patient. Determining the pulse obliteration pressure will avoid overinflation. Rapidly inflate the cuff to 80 millimeters of mercury while palpating the radial artery pulse. Continue to inflate in 10 millimeter of mercury increments until the pulse disappears. Then, deflate the cuff at a rate of 2 millimeters of mercury per second, noting the pulse obliteration pressure where the pulse reappears. You are now ready to measure the patient's blood pressure. Inflate the cuff to 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the pulse obliteration pressure. Then, deflate the cuff at a rate of approximately 2 millimeters of mercury per second while listening with the stethoscope for Karotkov sounds. As the pressure in the cuff is decreased, Blood flow in the brachial artery increases, which creates turbulence and generates Karotkov sounds. Phase 1 Karotkov sounds are clear tapping sounds that coincide with reappearance of a palpable radial or brachial pulse. Systolic blood pressure is determined by the onset of Phase 1 sounds. Phase 2 and 3 sounds are of no clinical significance and are described as softer and longer, then crisper and louder. Phase 4 sounds become muffled and softer as the pressure measurement approaches the diastolic pressure, usually within 10 millimeters of mercury of true diastolic pressure. Phase 5 sound is not a sound, but rather is the level at which sounds disappear. The diastolic blood pressure is measured at the start of phase 5. To ensure that diastole has been reached, the cuff pressure should continue to be slowly deflated for an additional 10 millimeters of mercury beyond the fifth Karotkov sound. The blood pressure should be measured at least twice, waiting one minute between readings, then recording the average of the two measurements. In the following example, please listen for the various phases of the Karotkov sounds while you observe the reading on the manometer.
an auscultatory gap is defined as the intermittent disappearance of the initial Korotkoff sounds after their first appearance. This phenomenon can lead to underestimation of systolic blood pressure. Obtaining the pulse obliteration pressure can be helpful in avoiding incorrect measurement. Certain conditions, such as cardiac arrhythmias, may complicate blood pressure measurement or interpretation. In these circumstances, decreasing the rate of deflation and averaging several readings may improve accuracy. Observer bias is the most common error that occurs in blood pressure measurements. It occurs because practitioners often show digit preference or round off the terminal digit. When two people use the same correct technique for measuring blood pressure, there should be little variation in the reading they obtain. Accurate measurements is crucial for your care team and your patient because blood pressure data is used to classify patients, to stratify their cardiovascular risk, and to monitor the effects of treatment. Could just a few times palpate your own brachial artery. Yeah. Hold on, if you find a nice strong brachial pulse there. So when we need to place the cuff um, on the arm, we need to make sure that the cuff's an appropriate size for the patient, um, a few centimeters above the lateral, because that's where okay. I'm going to need to put the catheter. If you notice on the cuff, there's a little arrow saying oh, artery, okay. yep. and that's where the um, that's where you place the cuff. Okay. Do a stethoscope as well for this. So the first step is what we're going to do is going to need to close off the valve here. And what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to palpate the brachial artery like we did before. And what I'm going to do in my scope here, if you can see, is I'm going to pump up the cuff um, until I can no longer feel the pulse any longer. And when I can no longer feel the pulse, I'm going to make a, a rough estimate of the reading at that point. Okay. All the way down. that's now my estimated systolic bleeding if you remember because he's got the two measurements yeah. of systolic and the diastolic so that's the estimated systolic bleeding so now for the next step what I'm going to do is the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the area of the brachial artery okay. and this time when I pump it up I'm going to pump it up to about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the estimated systolic bleeding and then I'm going to let the cuff down very very gradually to try and actually take the measurement yeah. Um, if you remember, there's two sounds that we're looking for. The first sound is when we put the first tapping sound, is the first cross yeah. sound, and that's the dense systolic reading. The, when the sound disappears, that's the fifth cross sound, and that's when we take the diastolic reading. Yeah. Okay. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. thank you. So then we let the we let the cuff down, and so then I could hear the first tapping sound at about 120, and um, and the sound disappeared at 78. So that would be 120 over 78 that we're okay, pressing. Okay, thank you. Um, so after the reading, and um, then obviously it's important to document it very carefully in the notes. Um, one thing to say about this procedure, it is something that you need to practice a lot. You'll find when you go on your clinical placement, that's really. Important. Blood pressure is 112 over 66. Use the correct size scale.
to this introduction to the skill of reading blood pressure. There are many parts to the skill of taking a blood pressure. This video is focused on learning to read the gauge. You will listen to several blood pressure readings and you will then record your reading so you will need some paper and a pen or pencil. The instrument used is called a sphygmomanometer. You will be able to say this work practicing is to coordinate what you hear with what you see on the gauge. You will listen for the first sound, which is the systolic blood pressure. Next, listen for when the sound stops. This is the diastolic blood pressure. Then write down your measurement. Every measurement has a unit that is part of recording the reading. For blood pressure, the unit of measurement is MMHG. This stands for millimeters of mercury. When recording the blood pressure measurement, write down two numbers as a fraction. The top number indicates the systolic blood pressure when the heart contracts with full force. The bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure when the heart rests and refills. Also, write down the unit MMHG. But the idea is to listen for the sound and mark where you hear the first sound and the sound stopping. We will listen to six different blood pressures and pause between each to give you time to record your measurement. Here are the answers to blood pressures one, two, and three. And here are the answers to blood pressures four, five, and six. Did you all come within plus or minus four millimeters mercury with your readings compared to the answers? That is the standard for accuracy for our course for the skill of measuring blood pressure. 